This is Black Round 313 and welcome to episode number three of the series in the shadows. Now understand that this video is not intended for all, but for that very small audience of individuals in whom I call my shadows people and my walk in the dark people based off of these two series that are running together in which, by the way, I plan to extend most high willing. So I'm going to give you a second for the average listener to turn away. Thank you for tuning in. But this is not the type of content that I'm sure you would like. So I'll catch you on the next one for those who like content on female nature and other topics that I cover. Now, this is episode three of In the Shadows. Subtitle. Desirelessness is my desire. Let's begin. In a world that offers so many distractions and illusions, it's more than understandable how one can get swept under the current of materialism and worldliness. You have television, you have your cell phone, social media apps galore. You have to go to work and relationships also, all of which keeps the mind overloaded and causes much stress and even some cases pain. Many of us have had or still have the desire to become rich or socially accepted or acceptable and or to appeal to others by keeping up with trends, which we know is a mindless existence. Living for the futility of the moment in terms of indulgence, living for that in which is temporal. We know this to be more than foolish. The world, as so does the female, always wants more and more. Eyes full of desire. Desire that can never be satiated. But yet, and still, in such lies the drive to thrive by spending all of your energy and time in attempt to get the bag as a man, the bag, the bag getting is considered by many in this world a virtue. Everyone respects someone who is seen as having money. But think of this. Think about all the time the average person spends in pursuit of money, in pursuit of your desires. Instead of being content, look at how much time and energy you waste in pushing and pushing to meet your elusive desires. Now, of course, who wouldn't love to be rich, including myself? But I would not spend my lifetime chasing riches. I would not spend my lifetime chasing the bag. For me, being rich would only enable me to live more in the shadows, to live more in solitude. Imagine buying 100 acres of land with a house on it, along with a pond for fishing, a garden house, a three wheeler ATV, with mounds on your property for a little recreation and having everything in your house for entertainment that you would want. For me, I would have my groceries delivered and I would only leave my property for doctor's appointments and traveling. I'd literally stay on my private property for three or more months at a time and avoid all contact with society at large other than seeing a few ladies here and there. My life will be lived in silence, solitude, and oblivion. I turn my face away from the world. 
not toward it. Question, how would you live your life if you were a multi-billionaire? Having all the wealth that you can ever imagine, would you live in the shadows or would you live a life of abundance and luxury, excess and attention? Let me know in the comments section. But desire for riches, the practical pursuit of such is an exercise in futility. My desire for riches is only to enhance my shadow living. However, again, I do not chase riches. Desire, ever increasing desires, desires of the many, again, which are elusive. We have to know, see, and accept only want and desire the power that desirelessness brings. As we understand that suffering occurs when you desire that in which you cannot have. And this doesn't mean that you would never, ever even want it. But since you can't have it, then one must be wise and seek not to want that in which you cannot have. Now, imagine not being invested so much into the future, not looking at the past, but living and being content in the very moment that you are in, moment to moment. As humans, we are forward thinking. However, too much forward thinking, you will miss the present. Do not put your mind too much in the future. Don't dwell on the past. Focus on the moment. Enjoy the grass, the trees, the wind blowing, the sunset, the snowfall, the brisk, cold air against your face. How many moments have you missed in this life by looking away from the moment and setting your desires toward the future, placing your thoughts, thereby placing yourself in the future, missing the moments. This is suffering. But when you obtain desirelessness, when you limit your desire, you're able to dwell more in the present and not focus on the past or future. When you desire everything you end up with nothing when you desire nothing you have everything if you lose something that you are detached from there is no loss at all indifference in life is power for the powerless you lose a job but you don't care because you don't depend on it. You don't depend on it because you are a minimalist and you are not afraid to go and be without. Imagine the strength in that. What if wifey no longer likes you? That's okay. You accepted that she was just temporary anyway. So when she leaves, you expect it such, you accept such, and you can get over such. Desirelessness is power. Things not going your way in life. Okay. Life is short anyway. Do you see the power of a proper perspective? Personal note. To make another point. About new wardrobes recently changing my look from the 90s baggy style to more of a fitted style also buying clothes that were more comfortable but an amazing thing happened to me in the process which is this and which I want to share what happened was is that the more clothes that I bought the more I wanted to buy I had to stop myself and go back to being desireless. Yes, I wanted the clothes, but I had to stop myself 
from going above what I deemed necessary. Why am I saying this? The reason is, is because one must be careful as to not fall into the mindless state of the rest of the society. I was desiring too much desire. So I had to bring myself back to being desire less. Sure, I needed new clothes. Sure, I needed more comfortable clothes. Sure, I wanted to change my style a bit for the comfort and convenience of such. But I almost slipped into consumerism, into materialism, which is not living in the shadows. Now, everything must require a balance. We do live in a world. And there are times when we must keep up appearances. But being in the shadows, we only do that in which we must. And we try our best to live in moderation as far as consuming and in moderation as far as being social. Therefore, there are times when there are need for certain clothing and certain attire. We do what we have to do so that we can do what we want to do. Now, the million dollar question is, how does one begin the process into desirelessness? I've talked about this to a degree in part two of this series, but let me add and expound more on what it takes to adopt such a lifestyle. And from here forward in this series, the goal is to give you something toward that direction into desirelessness, into the shadows. So without further ado, here are a few steps for this particular video, part three of in the shadows on how we take a step into the direction into the shadows. Here's the power of perspective, starting at number one, see the world for what it truly is, which is a terrible place full of pretentiousness arrogance and gross materialism mindless automatons running around chasing money for the purpose of social acceptance and vanity herein lies the endless pursuit that serves only as a distraction and time waster it serves its purpose of taking away the development of your mind and soul to focus on the physical instead of the mental and the spiritual. Now, a legacy left that involves money is definitely good. However, a legacy of knowledge and wisdom is far greater. How, you may ask? Many doubt the ram. But to answer how is knowledge and wisdom greater than money is simply this. One of those things is temporal and once it's used up, it's gone. But the other is eternal for wisdom is forever. It goes from generation to generation to generation. Riches are not. Knowledge is infinite. Money materialism is finite. Number two. As to the process of living in the shadows. Number two of three we participate in the world as least and as less as possible we i us the shadow dwellers do not participate in the culture of materialism we don't do so-called holidays we don't participate in the traditional dating scene especially it's been over 15 years since i've taken a woman out to dinner on a first date in whom I have not monkey danced with. I don't mess with the world like that. I don't mess with the fee fail like that. I don't live by the ideas and concepts, culture and traditions of the masses. I ignore such. I refuse to participate because I live and walk in the dark, in the shadows. I am not a part of your world. My world is of the shadows. Number three and last 
for this video anyway. Number three, we detach from that. We detach from what you want and can have by developing a disdain for what you cannot have. Repeat. Detach from what you want by developing a disdain for what you cannot have. I can't have it, so I don't desire it. So since I don't desire it, I'm good with not having it. There is no such thing as a beautiful, young, virginal, in shape, humble, submissive female that will love you to no end. There's no such thing as truly wifey material. So since such a creature does not exist, there is no need, especially in the West, to even look for such. Now, maybe you could have found such a hundred years ago, but certainly not now. Therefore, catch and release, pump and let her dump. Now, in closing, let me say this, as I've said before, and although I don't do this, the highest form of discipline, of self-control and desirelessness is voluntary celibacy. Along with eating a diet that consists only of clean, lean, organic meat, along with vegetables and just a little fruit and filtered or natural spring water. What I said sounds simple, but this is the highest form of living in the shadows, the highest form of a disciplined life, the highest form of a life of solitude, self-acceptance, and being unlike the rest of the world. Clean eating and abstaining from relations. I'm not there yet, but I recognize this as a high level of existence. And I want to say that I have a high level of respect for all those who dare to live such a life. There is much power in being content with what you have and not desiring much more minimalism as it is. In my own life, I'm very content with the simple. Coming home from work, taking a hot shower and having a good meal, watching Netflix and then laying down to watch YouTube. For me, this is more exciting and fulfilling than going out to a restaurant, bar or club any day. Is this you as well? Tell me so if you desire to do so in the comments section. Do you desire to be desireless? Also, let me know. Give me some feedback. And again, due to popular request, I have decided most high willing to make this an ongoing series from here on out, which means I'll try to make many more videos about living in the shadows. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button so that you will not miss a Black Realm 313 video. In the description box are links to the PayPal, to the Patreon, to the email address, and to the second YouTube account. Do with those links as you will. And until next time, my brothers, I will see you in the shadows. Black Ram 313 within the shadows part three. And I'm out.